Hello. In the last video, we sized some injector geometry. We sized some holes and annuluses for a hypothetical injector for our rocket engine. And in this video, we're going to uh, lock down the last few uh, major dimensions for our rocket engine, including the diameter of the chamber itself and the length of the cylindrical section of the chamber. Um, and you can see we've added some lines to our spreadsheet here. The first one is uh, AC over AT or the area of the chamber, uh, the ratio between the area of the chamber to the area of the throat. And we've picked a value of four for this, meaning that the, the area of the chamber is four times the area of the throat. Uh, this is typically about as low as you want to go with that ratio. Uh, you can go higher, but uh, you typically want to keep it uh, four or above, uh, at least according to the literature that I've read. Um, so then that uh, propagates down to the chamber area and the chamber diameter and you can see that actually uh, because of you know pi r squared type thing um, the the chamber diameter ends up being twice the throat diameter um, which is kind of nice it makes for a nice compact uh, rocket engine if you were say uh, metal 3d printing this and wanted to keep the uh, sort of size down and then uh, then we have this l star parameter um, we've picked an l star value of 0 0.5 meters. So L star is sort of, it's a, it's a weird thing or sort of weird thing. It's sort of a proxy for like combustion residence time or sort of like, if you assume that uh, combustion starts right at the injector face, how long would it take for the combustion to fully complete as it's propagating down the chamber? Um, and that's sort of this L star value. So you can see it's the, it's the volume of the chamber over the area of the throat. Um, and in this case, I, I believe that the volume of the chamber is sort of just the, the, the we're just considering the cylindrical section of the chamber. Um, so it's basically, you know, the, it would be the area of the cylindrical, the, the cylindrical area of the chamber uh, times the length of the cylindrical section. Um, or so this, that's what this chamber length is. It's really the length of the cylindrical section. Um, but yeah, so we've chosen an L-star value of about 0 0.5. You'll see in, in literature, sometimes they get quite quite high up to like a meter or even over a meter um, in order to fully complete combustion. But in other sources, I've seen much lower values than, uh, than these. Um, the tool we are going to use, RPA, it, take, it starts with an assumed value, L-star value of one meter. But the problem with that is that you just end up with a ridiculously long chamber, like an impractically long chamber, if you try to um, maximize for uh, this combustion residence time. And really, you're going to get, you know, the majority of your combustion is going to take place, um, even if you cut that L-star value short a bit. So we'll stick with 0 0.5, um, maybe a little bit lower than what some literature might suggest, but uh, we'll still get, uh, uh, you know, m almost mostly complete combustion assuming we have you know good mixing and good atomization from our uh, injector um, yeah so that uh, th that l star value will give us then our chamber length or our cylinder length so now we have most of the major dimensions of our rocket engine because we already found the throat diameter and the nozzle exit diameter we now have the chamber diameter and the length this of the cylinder so now we just have these curves to deal with or these angles um, so in terms of the uh, diverging nozzle section. This could be as simple as a, as a cone. Um, and in fact, that's like the, the sort of simple, most simple cases is just a conic nozzle with a, a half angle or sort of like the angle between the angle between a horizontal and one side of the nozzle. A typical half angle uh, might be something like 15 degrees. I've seen that a lot. Um, so you can sort of, you know, play around with these curves, but uh, most of the major dimensions of our rocket engine have been set. So what I'm going to do now is hop into this program called uh, RPA or Rocket Propulsion Analysis. Uh, I'm just using the free trial version. I'll have a link for the uh, I'll have a link for the for the for that trial in the in the description. Um, and we're just going to quickly um, add our parameters from our spreadsheet and plug them in here. And uh, hopefully it will line up pretty closely to the values we we got from NASA CEA. Um, so this is a 1,000 pound force hydrolox engine. 
and the chamber pressure is 1000 PSIA. Remember, it's always absolute units. Um, we'll have it determine the thrust chamber size for us, and we want a thrust of 1000 pound force. At sea level, we said, so one atmosphere. So this nozzle, again, like what we did with CEA in the previous videos, is, uh, is its goal is to perfectly expand our exhaust gases to ambient pressure of one atmosphere, sort of at sea level. Um, and then we'll sort of let it determine its, uh, the mass flow rates based on what the math it's doing. Uh, one chamber, because we're not Russian. Um, <laughs> and let's see. So we picked an OF of four. And our oxidizer was liquid oxygen. And our fuel was liquid hydrogen. And you can see these are both liquid. Um, we're going to leave the temperature and pressure blank for now. Um, it shouldn't uh, make that much of a difference since RPI already knows that these are liquids. Um, the nozzle flow model, let's see here. Uh, we want to pick our contraction area ratio because we set that in the spreadsheet as four. So that means that the area of the chamber is four times the area of the throat or the diameter of the chamber is two times the diameter of the throat. Um, the exit condition, again, we said that it will be exiting at one atmosphere. And you can see it has the same stations uh, as NASA CEA uh, with the chamber, throat, and exit. Uh, let's see here, nozzle shape and efficiencies. We'll let it do a bell nozzle. Um, you can play around with these, of course. Uh, remember I talked about the, having the conical nozzle with a half angle. So you could have it, you could set that 15 degree half angle um, as a, if you wanted to do a conical nozzle. Um, and then we're not going to throttle this, so we'll leave that alone. So I think we've done the first three steps. Uh, performance, determinants and analysis. Okay, I think we got all that. Uh, here we go. Chamber geometry. Okay, so here we go. I told you that the L star that it started with is one meter, which leads to some ridiculously long chambers. So we're going to set that to half a meter um, for now. And I think we're going to leave the rest of these alone. But like I said, you can play with these and it will change sort of your uh, radius of curvature of all these various different uh, parameters. Um, Yeah, so I think, and then this is thermal analysis. We'll get into this in a later video, but this is like if you want to have a heat sink chamber that's sort of like, a, that doesn't operate in equilibrium, um, but is radiatively cooled, uh, or if you want to have, you know, regenerative cooling through cooling channels in your, in your wall, um, this is where you would play around with that. And we'll do that, we'll go over that in a later video. Um, yeah, so I think we're ready to start the analysis. So let's run this, and here we go. So we get to uh, this screen here. And hopefully you can see, because I don't think I can zoom in, but the uh, this gives us everything that we calculated off of CEA. Um, but this is doing, you know, doing its own calculations based on um, the, the parameters of input. So if you go back and look at the spreadsheet, um, you can kind of see that these that these line up pretty closely. Uh, the total mass flow rate 1.2 kilograms per second. Our total mass flow rate is 1.16 kilograms per second. Ox mass flow rate uh, 0.96 versus our 0.93. Fuel 0.23 versus 0.24. So these are pretty close. Um, and the reason you can sort of always assume that RPA's uh, mass flow rates will need to be a little bit higher than the, the idealized mass flow rates that you calculate using NASA CEA. And that's for a number of reasons, but the, the primary one probably is that CEA, or at least we told C NASA CEA to assume uh, an infinite area combustor, which means basically um, <clears throat> an infinite combustion residence time, um, perfect, complete combustion, or at least according to the chemistry, perfectly complete combustion. Um, based on the OF that you set. So, you know, like everything has time to react basically. Um, and, but in RPA, we've, you know, 
set an L star of half a meter. We've uh, set a chamber sort of size. And so RPA sort of knows that maybe we're not getting um, that perfectly ideal case. Um, so you know, we will need slightly higher mass flow rates to account for that um, in order to get the thrust that we want. So you can see that the, the thrust is four point, uh, let's see, this is in vacuum. So let's see if we can find the thrust at sea level. Here we go. Uh, 4.44 kilonewtons and yeah there you go so it's so it's perfectly producing a thousand pounds of thousand pound force of thrust um, like we wanted to but in order to get that with the parameters we set with the you know the imperfect uh, chamber size and and whatnot uh, it will need slightly higher mass flow rates than what CEA tells us but you can tell that they're within you know a couple percent um, of each other so that that looks good now let's just double check on the diameter of our throat. This DT, it says 23 millimeters. Our spreadsheet, uh, we had 22.8. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, nozzle exit should be about 65 millimeters. It's 66 in the RPA. So you can see that these are all within, you know, like 1% of each other, which is very, uh, very good, very affirming of uh, that we did that we did something right when we did our spreadsheet and we. Uh, and we went through NASA CEA. So this is just another tool we can use to uh, to you know double check ourselves and also perhaps get even more accurate, uh, true to reality uh, uh, values. So now, the nice thing about this is that this will um, sort of calculate the geometry of all of these different lines and curves for you based on the parameters that you set. So instead of having to manually sort of take these different values like uh, the throat diameter, exit diameter, diameter length, and then and then come up with some curvatures and come up with some angles, um, we can get that all done for us by these parameters and we can export this as a sort of file that we can import into CAD and and just go to town. So we'll do this real quick. Um, we'll call this Hydro 2 and we'll keep millimeters. It'll draw the half the contour. Um, yeah, so let's quickly hop into CAD and uh, you can see I've already done it, but I'll go through it again real quick. I'm sure that most CAD programs should be capable of uh, importing a DXF file um, or something similar. Uh, we call it Hydro 2. And there you go. There's your, there's your your contour, your your chamber, your throat, and your your nozzle perfectly represented in CAD, um, ready to go. And then if you wanted to, you know, uh, just offset this by the wall thickness. Uh, let's say it's one millimeter. And then, you know, close the sketch. You could revolve this sketch around an axis. And there you go, you have a rocket engine. And you can see even, even with an L star of uh, half a meter instead of one meter, you still get sort of this uh, slightly comically long combustion chamber. We could, um, you can see that the, the nozzle exit diameter is a bit larger than the chamber diameter. So if we wanted, we could maybe make those the same um, if we were, uh, you know, 3D printing this or something, um, but this is sort of, this is one easy way to get a jump start on uh, sort of the, the chamber, throat, nozzle, all that uh, geometry uh, is through this tool, uh, RPA, Rocket Propulsion Analysis. Yeah, so thank you.